Uh, it's Dwyer. September 1st, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's take a deeper dive on Diego Pacheco. Right, in the hopes of having an edge on the casino for his next fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's an interview. Marcos Viejas, excellent interviewer, interviewing Diego Pacheco, who talked about how he normally walks around in the 180s. Now, you look at him, 6'4", 168 pounds on fight night, or at least for the weigh-in, and you realize that this 23-year-old, here's where age matters, hasn't fully matured physically, right? He's in that young part of his career where he's big, but yet he doesn't weigh that much. Even a 6'4 guy, an athlete, weighing in the 180s is a little bit low. So let me just say this. As Pacheco gets older, let's say over the next two to three years, Pacheco's weight, even if he stays in shape, is going to jump. Right, folks? I understand Eddie Hearn... His promoter uh, came out today and uh, is talking about Pacheco possibly fighting Jaime Munguia. I'm sure they're doing certain things to line up better fights. Also, uh, Pacheco's stablemate, David Benavides, who himself, uh, in my eyes, has outgrown 168. Still wants to fight Canelo and, quite frankly... The winner of Baturbiev Bevel is much more dangerous for him than fighting Canelo. Right? So, understand, David Benavides' father is the trainer of Diego Pacheco. I'm sure there's work behind the scenes to set things up where even though Pacheco is the mandatory for the winner of the Canelo Berlanga fight, I'm sure they're trying to set it up so that David Benavides is the person who fights Canelo. Uh, bigger payday, Benavides uh, has much less time left at 168, if he has any, than does Diego Pacheco, at least at first glance. I would question that. Right, so understand, the powers that be are trying to set things up so Pacheco's next fight isn't against Canelo, should Canelo beat Berlanga. Now let me make a point here, right? Just looking at, and sometimes that's what it takes, just looking at Diego Pacheco. If he's ever going to fight Canelo, in my opinion, it has to be now after the Canelo Berlanga fight, right? Because you look at his body, folks, he is real thin, right? He's extremely thin. This is Thomas Hearns at 147 pounds. Understand, Hearns gains weight, goes all the way up to light heavyweight, right? This is the young man before his body says, player, we're going to add some muscle, this is with the guy being a professional athlete who's in the gym. So Pacheco, in my eyes, isn't going to be able to stay at 168 much longer. Just like Benavides ended up at 175, just like David Morrell left 168. Folks, I don't care if you're unbeaten. If your body says, hey, we've had enough. We can't make weight anymore. And that's what happens as you age. Then Pacheco necessarily is going to have to move up to 175. So whatever glamour match 
he wants at 168, he has to take it now. Now he's calling out Jaime Munguia. Let's be blunt here, folks. Canelo already beat Munguia. If you want to reach for the top shelf, it has to be Canelo. Not the guy Canelo beat. Not the guy who just left his trainer, Freddie Roach, to go back to his prior trainer. Right? Jaime Munguia knows who he is. He's not a advanced technician. He wants to be a tough guy. He's the guy who wants to come in and show some brute force. Right? He doesn't want to spend a lot of time connecting the dots, thinking, hey, I better do this, I better do that. He's like AJ. Right? AJ leaves Derek James because Derek James had him thinking of too many things in the pocket. Goes to Ben Davidson. Sometimes that works. It's working for AJ. So just understand. It's fascinating to me. It's, it's riveting. But Diego Pacheco, who was calling out Canelo, would rather fight someone else. Would rather have Benavides fight Canelo. The sanctioning bodies have said to Benavides, you can have the winner of Bevel, who he used to spar with, or Beterbiev, who's a beast. Right? We call Benavides the Mexican monster. Just understand, Godzilla in that fight might be Benavides. Excuse me, not Benavides, but Bevel. Excuse me, not Bevel. Too many Bs, guys. But Beterbiev. Right? And so it seems to me that they're setting it up so we ultimately get a Benavides versus Canelo fight. Well, let me criticize Diego Pacheco here for a moment. Right? I know it's hard to criticize a young guy who's 23, who's already a mandatory, who is unbeaten. Right? But this is not a fan club site. We want an edge on the casino. Sometimes that takes looking at a fighter's strengths and weaknesses. Now let me just say this. Pacheco does better against taller fighters. Right? He is a guy who is very calm in the ring. He has a pinpoint straight right hand. He has an excellent jab. If the athleticism with his opponent is relatively equal, and if the opponent isn't shorter, quicker, more coordinated, and can duck under what Pacheco's doing, or can move like a Joe Fraser, Right? Too much for a Pacheco who, if he were a quarterback, would be great at hitting the open receiver. Wouldn't be as good hitting the moving receiver. Right? Isn't that the difference between the pros and college? Right? In the pros, a Tom Brady can hit you when you're on the move. When Brady hooked up with Randy Moss, folks, that was serendipity for football fans. Because Moss was fast, Moss could move, and Brady could read the movement. Now looking at Diego Pacheco, to me, Pacheco would rather you stand still than move. I thought Selecki was giving him problems. I thought Selecki, who himself, 6'1", not a short guy, but shorter than Pacheco. I thought Selecki did an excellent job of having his hands up and moving his head. In other words, if a shot from Pacheco came, this defensively mindful opponent 
was either going to catch it on the hands or roll with the punch. In other words, when you have this dynamic going, and of course, he's bent down a little bit. Pacheco understood he needed to thread the needle. He had problems doing that. Understand, too, the shorter man opens the fight on his front foot and is going after Pacheco's body. He sees what we all see. A young guy who's too thin, who hasn't yet filled out. Right? His body is going to fill out. You remember how rail thin Thomas Hearns was when he started. Then, of course, you looked at Hearns and fights later in his career, and you notice he had filled out. Right? Hearns actually had a very broad back at the end. Right? Well, Pacheco doesn't have that yet. There's not a lot of meat on the bone. He's very thin. So, of course, a shorter guy who can duck under him, who can move. So Pacheco is lower volume. Can't really throw that pinpoint right hand when you're moving. Right? Pacheco had problems, folks. Now, against a taller guy who isn't a great athlete, let's say a guy who's 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", Right, Pacheco, if he matches him with athleticism, won't have to worry about that guy moving as much. But let's just say, as impressed as I was, and I'm very impressed, with Pacheco, who, as I've said, is an A-level prospect, I have little doubt that a twitchy guy like Roy Jones at 168 would beat him. Right, because Pacheco is calm, but he's also a little bit wooden. This is not the twitchy guy. So what I want people to do is to think about what happens here, because this fight might actually happen down the road. Think about what happens here if Pacheco gains weight. And then he decides, okay, look, he's walking around in the 180s right now. He gets an opportunity to fight J.O. Pattaya, cruiserweight champion. Now, I need for folks to realize that you heard me call Roy Jones here twitchy. You know the guy. He's standing in front of you. He could even drop his hands. But he's so fast that as he just moves his body a little bit, looks like he has electrical currents running through his body every time he just thinks a little bit. You have to think about it. Because you understand if it's not a faint, if it's a real shot, you're going to be in trouble. Now, Diego Pacheco is athletic. He's coordinated. He's not twitchy. Right? So, I want people to think about the fights ahead of him. You know who's twitchy? At 175? Dimitri Bevel. Right? Bevel's a guy who's moving around the ring, but when he comes in, you understand you're dealing with hand speed, combinations. Right? You have to pay attention to his feints. I believe twitchy, smaller guys are the guys with the best chance of beating Diego Pacheco. Let me also say this too. I want people to revisit the stoppage. It's a beautiful stoppage. It's a sequence that has to be seen. It's a great liver shot. But let's play it through. Pacheco comes with a right hand that goes over the head of Selecki, right? It like grazes the top of Selecki's head. Now I need for folks to understand, Pacheco is great inside, particularly for a 6'4 guy. He's great inside. But at that moment, he was open. Right? You come in, you're 6'4", 
excuse me, you're six four. You come inside. You throw a right hand that sails over five eight Canelo's head. Right, folks. Canelo has one of the best left hooks in boxing. Right. You don't want to be extended over Canelo. There's too much of you to hit. A guy who's a counterpuncher dreams of those moments. Now, Pacheco closes the show, believe it or not. Right? He misses with the right hand. He comes back with the left hook. Now, let's just say the left hook he throws is perfect. Right? That, folks, that's a shot where if you were looking in a dictionary and you saw liver shot if it's a multimedia setup you could click on it and what pacheco did is the perfect liver shot but let's ask a troubling question here did he chop down the tree was this the fight where the tall guy is landing shots to the body and you're thinking to yourself man he, he simply you know, the opponent can't allow this to continue, right? There was a fight on the undercard, the Nunez fight, where Nunez <laughs> hits Mariaga to the body. There's like a full two seconds between when Mariaga is hit to the body with that shot and when he hits the canvas. And you felt watching that fight because Nunez was going to the body you know, had softened up Mariaga to the body. You yourself watching the fight were probably having body pains, right? You understood this guy was going to the body. He was systematically cutting down his opponent. I would argue that's not the case in the Diego Pacheco fight, right? Pacheco is having a hard time, in my opinion, finding Selecki's body. Now, Selecki is 6'1". Canelo, who sparred with Pacheco, is 5'8". Canelo can fight in a crouch. Right? Canelo, of course, has his head tucked, is a master at moving his head even without having his hands up. When he has his hands up and he's moving his head, a tall guy is going to have a hard time finding him, especially one who wants you still. is not a guy who is Tom Brady, doesn't like hitting moving targets. So, I know it's counterintuitive, but if they were to put in a Diego Pacheco with, let's say, a Chris Eubank. And Eubank's 160. But I keep telling people here he's complicated. Right? I believe if a Eubank looks at this Selecki film, he's going to realize, okay, I need to move my head. Right? He's also going to realize that Pacheco is a bit too calm. Right? Pacheco comes out, he looks a bit too relaxed. A Eubank would understand, hey, the first few rounds here are up for grabs. This guy's not going to come across the ring and find me and throw a lot of shots. No, this is the judicious guy. Right? Who's going to take his time. While he's taking his time, I need to turn this into a David versus Goliath type of event. I need to get the crowd on my side. Right? Also, you know, as long as Diego Pacheco is 6'4 and fighting at 168 pounds, I need to go to his body early. Right? Let's just say... There are strategies to fighting Diego Pacheco, right? We need to think about that because if Canelo beats Berlanga, 
and then says what a lot of champs say in boxing. Okay, who's my mandatory? Let me go fight that guy. The public could be outraged. The public could say, you're still not going to fight Benavides? Right, Canelo's going to say, hey man, I lost that belt, right, where, Canelo, uh, where Benavides was the mandatory. Uh, the sanctioning body took that belt from me. <laughs> the belt I have now, I have to honor that mandatory. I've sparred with Diego Pacheco. He's young. He's unbeaten. Let's have at it. Right? Understand, if Pacheco fights Canelo, he's going to be fighting a defensively blessed shorter guy with a big punch. Let's remember, Canelo stops the champ at 175, Kovalev. Right? Canelo has a punch that carries. Canelo used to spar with Frank Sanchez, the heavyweight. Right? Just the fact that Canelo has sparred already with David Benavides, excuse me, not, ben, not David, but Diego Pacheco, should say a lot to people. Right? I think Canelo's a problematical opponent for Diego Pacheco. Right? I'm a little disappointed to hear Pacheco talking about fighting Jaime Munguia. I think Pacheco beats Munguia. But I'm a little bit surprised that you could be the mandatory and not take the shot on Canelo when you understand that you walk around in the 180s and that you might not be able to stay at the weight much longer. Right, so let me just say this. The body shot on Selecki, masterful. But he didn't chop down the tree there. Understand, too, there's a fight where a guy is landing left hooks repeatedly on Diego Pacheco who, as gifted as he is, is still figuring some things out, right? So I would argue that Diego Pacheco is great when you're not moving. I would argue when he comes inside, he's not as defensively mindful as he could be. He's great inside. But let's just say if Selecki was a puncher and not a guy with less than 50 knockouts, when Pacheco missed with that right hand right before the left hook that ends the fight, he would have been in trouble against a number of fighters. Right? Just food for thought. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. If I rule boxing... I would want Canelo, if he beats Berlanga, to fight Diego Pacheco next. Right? Young guy at 168. I don't think he's at 168 for much longer. Benavides already has a great fight down the pike. The winner of Bivol against Paterbiev. Right? To me, we would all be taken care of. If Pacheco were able to beat Canelo, okay, it would be a new day in boxing. If Pacheco comes in and finds Canelo is hard to hit, and if Canelo fights low and targets Pacheco's body, things could get very interesting. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.